Do I remember for Sir Michael Northeast? Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> so I raise in this debate cognizant that what is before this very chamber is, in essence, a set of figures that is to reflect the program of the government of Barbados based on estimates as to how much money will be earned and based on a program of expenditure. And while that is the immediate issue at hand, one cannot help but start this debate or my contribution in this debate without reflecting on a few things that jumped home to me yesterday and today while listening to the speeches thus far. I listened to the Minister of Finance and I could easily have been listening to the Minister of Finance on our side a few years ago. I listened to members on that side seek to justify and prescribe blame to the Barbados Labour Party. And I listened to members on our side seeking to prescribe blame to the Democratic Labour Party. And I ask myself, sir, how many people out there are really interested in who is to blame other than it will become a relevant consideration at the point of an election? And I concede that. But in terms of their ability to buy food this week, in terms of their ability to pay for the increased gas prices, particularly the LPG Sunday night, in terms of their ability to pay their rent or to recognize that they're now paying increased light bills, they are not interested in that debate that is taking place in here. They are interested in what the government will do in the next year. And they are interested in if we are continuing to ask people in this country to make sacrifices, what are we making them in aid of? Where are you taking me? So that I know that even if I am to make a sacrifice in the broader interests of the country, I know my destination point. I know where I am going. And I fear, sir, that as a collective, all of us have not met that objective. And I feel that in failing to meet that objective at this particular juncture, when our buffer, our room for maneuvering is so minimal that we do so at our peril, but greater so at the peril of the confidence of the population in the class that governs them. And I say so, sir, cognizant that there is no, this is not a zero-sum game. There is no clear winner or loser. There is no clear monopoly to information or solutions. But what we are asking for is for a country to pull together at its most difficult period in post-independence Barbados, whether triggered by international economic factors or domestic policy considerations by whichever government, those with surpluses, those with deficits, it matters not. But what matters is where we take the country and what we ask of each other in taking the country to that destination. And I therefore, sir, pray that in the remaining days ahead of us, for the next three days, that we will come in to connection with the reality of the expectations of those whom we represent. They are aware of the acute nature of circumstances. They may not know, for example, that corporation taxes have declined 30% in the last three years, 29.6, 28.6 to be exact. Or they may not be aware that investment in Barbados gross capital formation 
has declined 30% in the last three years as well. They may not be aware in peculiar terms that we have continued now to have a fourth straight year of a current account deficit. In other words, that we are spending more on a day-to-day -day basis than we are earning. But they are aware that something is amiss. They know the workers of this country that they are carrying home less money and they're having less money to meet increased costs. They know if they are small businesses that they are struggling to keep their heads above water because much of the disposable income that many of our citizens would otherwise have had in order to get a manicure, in order to get a pedicure, in order to get a hair, go to the hairdresser, in order to be able to buy things that you would normally buy for your children, in order to let them go to the movies with the friends, in order to let them go in town and buy things that they would otherwise want, from clothes to hair to whatever. They know they can't do that with the ease that they did before. They know that they have to start growing vegetables in the backyard because they don't have the option of being able to buy vegetables in the supermarket at high cost. And the member for St. Michael West Central should seize on this opportunity because this is the chance when more and more will take responsibility for their own. They know that the larger companies are complaining. And we have already heard in this debate the plight of large trading companies in Barbados, from those such as Ammon, whose performance last year was as dismal as a $20 million loss, to others who, for the most part, experience significant losses as well in the context of this economy. They know these things. So what is our response? When our car breaks down, as mine did last night in this yard, I'm told because of the security system next door, others have done too because it's the, the radio waves knock out the computer system, but that's not the point. The, the point is, not at all. The point is that we go to a mechanic. As much as the Minister of Health tried to help me resolve the issue last night, he is not a mechanic, neither am I. So we went to the mechanic. Equally, if we are feeling poorly, if our stomach is hurting us, and the remedies that we have inherited are no longer working, we go to the doctor. If there's a problem in the country in relation to how the society and the economy is evolving, households, workers, everyone, they expect that we, who occupy the chambers of the legislature and the government, are equal to the task of fixing it, just as we repose confidence in that mechanic or that doctor or that lawyer. So I say to you, sir, that I believe that if there is one message in this debate that is as clear as punch, it is that there must be a fresh guard. Not a fresh guard for the Democratic Labour Party, not a fresh guard for the Barbados Labour Party, but a fresh guard for the government of Barbados and the development policies that we have been adhering to since independence. Not a fresh guard for the Minister of Finance or the Shadow Minister of Finance, but a fresh guard for a country that no longer can rely on significant import duties they will be declining more and more as we go forward from this year. And that is agreed because of the international and regional trade agreements to which we have subscribed and will continue to subscribe. But equally, because one of the major instruments of development policy for us to encourage investment, the use of tax incentives, be they to hotels, be they to manufacturing entities from the 1950s, be they to agricultural enterprises, that that will, within the next decade, not be an instrument that we can use to encourage people to invest either locally or to come in from outside. Now, I say to you, Mr. Speaker, and I don't know what other way to put it, I almost feel pained 
that we come back and do the same thing over and over? We say the same thing over and over? If it takes 11 years between the choice of site for St. David's Primary School, when I was Minister of Education in 2000, and now for that school to be built, something is wrong. If it takes in excess of six, seven years for us to deal with the program for the review of the Statistical Services Department or the Corporate Affairs Project or the Procurement Strategy, and I can go through project after project. If it takes, and these go across both governments now, three years under the Labour Party government, three years under this government, and they still haven't reached to the final point of destination. If it takes that time, do we not accept that something is wrong with the system and that we have not just an implementation deficit disorder, but it is now compounded by a structure and a size of government that can no longer be borne by what we produce in this country? So last year, the government came in this same debate and forecasted that it would earn $2.49 billion. The government, in fact, earned $2.35 billion, $145 million less. And it is not because of poor forecasting in the Ministry of Finance, I believe. It is not because of wickedness in high places, but it is because the underlying structure of our economy needs urgent examination as well as the underlying structure of our society. There are too many people who are full of ideas, booming with energy, but who can't get into the system. Equally, there is too much defense of the status quo, almost as if we are embalmers in government. And I ask ourselves, when will we accept responsibility for ensuring the legacy that we will leave to future generations in the same way that those who led before us guaranteed us that right of opportunity to be here today and to be benefiting from their investments? <coughs> it is a serious issue, sir, because there are difficult decisions and I ask the government in all sincerity again to establish a framework for a national dialogue. Politicians are afraid to be the ones to put out there anything that will lead to the dislocation of any particular group. But the bold reality is that if we don't adjust and restructure, we are all going to go down the slippery slopes. I don't know when. But I know for sure we will go. And I believe, sir, that the Prime Minister has a unique opportunity. One cast on his shoulders by history, but one from which I believe that he should have the courage to confront fully. It is not a case of anybody expecting that there's a monopoly of information on any one side or in any one group. 